it would have been important. Perfect. You would have got called. Is he coming in it? No, he sent an email. So I don't know if he was he, uh, he has sent it to the last minute. He sent it to the what? Last minute. He's he oh, oh, okay. Okay, okay. So we just enjoy the fact that. Yeah, okay. This is the first one I've seen. I haven't seen any Democrat. Mm -hmm. no, that's why I asked. But you know, that's good. He can beat her, but she's only got two years. She can beat her. Good evening. Uh, thank you for attending this evening's meeting. Uh, I'm going to call to order the public hearing. Um, can I have roll call, please? Whedon? Yes. Bianski? Yes. Money? Swem? Present. George? Present. You have a quorum. Thank you. I'll take a motion to open the public hearing. I'll so move. Second. Can you have roll call, please? Bianski? Yep. Swem? Yes. George? Yes. Whedon? Thank you. Uh, the purpose of this public meeting is to hear and consider any objections to the proposed special assessment, the district, and all other matters relating to the special assessment district for the emergency medical services through Southwest Michigan Community Ambulance Services. At this time, the City Commission will hear public comments on the proposed special assessment district for emergency services through the Southwest Michigan Community Ambulance Services, known to all of us as SMACAS. All persons wishing to comment shall be given the opportunity to do so. Any person addressing the commission shall do so at the podium, state his or her name, and direct their comments directly to the commission. In the event many people wish to comment, as I am presiding officer, may determine that each person speaking shall limit his or her comments to three minutes. At the presiding, as the presiding officer, I may terminate any public comments that are unreasonably lengthy, violate the city's rules of procedure of the city commission, or unrelated as the subject of the public hearing. At this time, is there any public comments? Please approach the podium. Say your name for the record and Norma Ferris, three zero four North Oak. Are you going to have a public hearing and then approve the resolution all at one time? No, this will happen after the public hearing. It'll be the process. But we're we still here. We don't get to see anything. I would like to see a map. Okay. I would like to know what all this is includes. Are we going to need to have a building here in Buchanan? Are we going to have to have other activities going on here, such as personnel? It's really to their existing operation. Then why do we need to expand the area? know the rules. <laughs> you don't have an answer. Okay. This expanded area is including parts of the Wajak and Cassopolis, which has been part of it right along. We're not going to increase the barn. We're not increasing anything. All this assessment is doing is doing what we didn't do last year. We're putting the $40 on the tax bill rather than pay for it out of the general fund. So this is not anything out of the ordinary. This has been going on since 1992. It's just last year it came to us too late for us to do the 60 days of hearings that we needed to do to create the assessment. So all we're doing is recreating the assessment that was created back in 92 or 93. 
Well, that's what it is, Dorma. That answered your question. Thank you, Norma. Thanks, Dan. Hi, I'm Kim Bicker. We live at 921 Main Street. I just had a question as it relates to the specially assessed against all residential units and all that. Unless such lands and premises are exempt by law from paying special assessments. Who is that? Who's exempt? Who's not paying? We will provide that information at the end of the meeting. If it's not provided uh, at the end of the meeting, then we will get that information put out to the public so that there's notice of who is exempt and what the criteria are for that. Okay, thank you. Thank you for the question. I am Randy Bickard. We're at 921 Main in Buchanan here, and I uh, love the community, but um, we've noticed uh, Kim and I have been married for five years, and when we got married, the property tax was 1800 bucks. Now that's over 2700 bucks, and we're just continually uh, seeing increases, and you're driving homeownership away. Uh, you're driving some businesses away, and at some point in time, we've got to call a timeout and just say, uh, when's enough enough and uh, when, when, when can we work within the budget that we have rather than keep asking more from homeowners and businesses and things of that nature. That's all I got. Thanks, Randy. Okay. Seeing no more public comments, I'll take a motion to close the public hearing. So moved. Oh. Sorry, I had correspondence. Oh, correspondence under that one. I had um, three phone calls from Scott King, Doyle Vergon, and Jan Walters that were against creating the special assessment. Um, I had emails from Carla Johnson, Don Ryman, Jennifer M., and Brittany Wall all against the special assessment. Very good. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Once again, uh, Patrick made a motion. I'll take a second. I'll so move. Thank you. Roll call, please. Slim. Yes. George? Yes. Whedon? Yes. Fiancé? Yes. Closed. Thank you. Uh, all right. At this time, I'll call to order the regular meeting of the City Commission uh, for this evening on September 23rd. Uh, we currently have a recognition. Uh, this proclamation will be for, and I, and I apologize up front, Craig tried to educate me on how to say this, so if anybody in the crowd has any assistance, I gladly take it. Uh, dysautonomia, dysautonomia, is that correct? Dysautonomia. Uh, Awareness Month has been submitted for the presented to Emma Miller. So at this time, I'll read what the proclamation states. Uh, and I, I, I would actually, at the end of it, if you're okay with it, I'd like for you to you know, give some clarity on what this uh, involves. And I think that at any given time, it can affect any one of us, uh, specifically our children. So uh, Bear with me one moment and I will read the proclamation. Where is the dysautonomia is a group of medical conditions that results in a malfunction of the auto, autonomic nervous system which is responsible for the automatic bodily functions such as resp respiration, heart rate, blood pressure, digestion, temperature control, and more. Where is it impacts over 70 million people around the world and includes conditions such as diabetic, autonomic neuropathy, neurogenic, oh my gosh, orthostatic, hypotension and postural uh, orthostatic tachycardia syndrome. Whereas the impacts people of any age, gender, race, or background, including many individuals living in the city of Buchanan. This can be very disabling, and disabling can result in social isolation, stress of the families, and those impacted in financial hardships. Some forms uh, can result in death, causing tremendous pain and suffering from those impacted on their loved ones. Increased awareness about this disease will help patients get diagnosed and treated early, save lives and foster support for individuals and families coping with this disease. Diso Dysautonomia International, a 501E3 nonprofit organization that advocates on behalf of patients, patients living with this disease encourages communities to celebrate uh, Dysautonomia Awareness Month each October around the world. Whereas we seek to recognize the contributions of medical professionals, patients and family members who are working to educate our citizen, 
s about the uh, dysautonomia in the city of Buchanan. Now, therefore, I, Mayor Mark Whedon of the city of Buchanan, do hereby proclaim the month of October Dysautonomia Awareness Month throughout the city of Buchanan, County of Berrien, and the state of Buchanan, state of Michigan. Sorry, my apologies. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> that was a mouthful. That was <laughs> <laughs> Can you say it correctly for us? Yes, please. Yeah. Sure uh, it's dysautonomia, and oh. it affects Thank mostly 90% uh, of females. Uh, I am a cross country runner, and last year, uh, right after my season, I just started having horrible migraines. I had numbness in my legs and started having heart palpitations. And we went to numerous doctors. Nobody knew what anything was. They said I could never fix uh, the leg numbness or anything that I had. And after going to a children's hospital up in Grand Rapids, they said dysautonomia for the first time. And that happens with a lot of patients because it's not widely known. And the main thing I wanted to do was bring awareness to it and let people know that this is a real thing. And many people have it and don't know. And a lot of people go undiagnosed and untreated for it. And I really think that this will help bring awareness to those with it. And I'm gonna talk to the middle school cross country team about it because it is, you know, going to affect their running if some of them have it, and there's ways they can get tested and get treated if they do have it. Wonderful. Thank you so much for that. Thank, Thank you. you for speaking to the children as well. I appreciate that. Thank you. Okay, if everybody would join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you. May I have roll call, please? George. Here. Weeda. Yes. Yaski. Yes. Money. Swem. Present. We have a quorum. Thank you. I uh, will take a motion to approve our tonight's agenda, please. I will make that motion. Thank you. May I have a second? I'll I oh, go ahead. Get I second. Around. Roll call, please. Weeda. Yes. Yaski. Yes. Swem. Yes. George. Yes. Carries. Thank you. At this time, we will accept public comments on agenda items only. Please keep your comments to three minutes. Uh, please state your name for the record and approach the podium to do so. Okay. Seeing nobody approach, uh, I'll take a motion to approve the consent agenda. I'll so move. Thank you. May I have a second? I'll support. Roll call, please. Leonski? Yep. Swem? Yes. George? Yes. Whedon. Yes. Carries. Thank you. All right. At this time, we'll take scheduled matters from the floor. Uh, water quality presentation presented by Southwest Michigan Planning Commission, Marcy Hamilton. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Uh, it's nice to see you. Um, it's been a while since I've been here. I uh, helped you guys with your master plan and recreation plan. Southwest Michigan Planning Commission, we're the regional planning agency for Berrien, Cass, and Van Buren counties. And so beyond just doing community master plans and recreation plans, um, we do transportation planning with um, NATS, some of you know, economic development, but we also do a lot of environmental work. And so tonight I'm here to talk to you a little bit about um, the stormwater program, you guys are part of a program where you have a permit from the Department of Environment, Great Lakes, and Energy um, called, um, it's for basically how we can protect our water resources. And um, so I just wanted, part of that um, permit is public education. And so all the communities in Berrien County um, contract with our agency to provide public education around water quality. So we've been doing that for, I think it's, pro it's probably been over 10 years now. Um, and so I just, we take the time to come out and speak to all the municipalities about the program, just make sure you understand what it is, why we're doing it, and a little bit about our wonderful water resources. 
Um, that's where I'll start in Berrien County. We're extremely lucky to have such um, wonderful streams and creeks and rivers and of course the Lake Michigan shoreline right on Lake Michigan so we have abundant uh, water resources that we want to make sure we try to keep healthy and clean for our enjoyment and for our economy. Um, so the threats to our water resources are kind of categorized two ways. One is from a point source coming out of like a factory or a wastewater treatment plant or something like that, it's a direct pipe. The other type of pollution that we have threatening our water bodies is just what we call storm water or polluted runoff that just, when it rains, it runs off the land into the nearest storm drain or into the nearest creek or river or wetland. And where does it come from? It comes everywhere on the landscape. So um, agricultural sources is one source and also urban areas or suburban areas and a lot of what I call car habitat, <laughs> places where our cars are and uh, all that impervious surface from roofs and um, driveways and roads, all that runoff goes into our stormwater system and can carry all the pollutants from lawns and those areas into our, our waterways. And now we have regulations in place with the Clean Water Act back in the early 1970s that really regulates anything coming out of a pipe. So all that has easy to regulate because it comes out of a pipe. But think of how hard it is to regulate just runoff coming off the land, not so easy. So that's where we have programs that have like public education and those things to try to improve water quality. Um, so the areas that fall under this program where you have to have a permit as uh, populations with over 50,000, you're like, wait, we're really small, but you're part of an urbanized area. Um, so those red areas, so the Niles, Buchanan, you're kind of lumped in with the South Bend metropolitan area, and then the Benton Harbor, um, St. Joe area. So those are kind of the two urbanized areas in the county that fall under these permits. So these. All the other communities that have the Red Hatch also have the permit. Also, the county drain commissions and the road departments are also under a permit for this program to try to protect the water quality out in the rural areas also. Um, so you know, obviously, St. Joe River is right here, running through your beautiful town. And it's a huge watershed. It's the third largest, and a watershed is all the area that drains to a body of water. So all the water that's flowing into the St. Joe River. Um, it's the third largest watershed in the Lake Michigan Basin. And it starts all the way over in Hillsdale. And the river flows over 200 miles um, down into Indiana, you know, through South Bend, up through Niles, up through Buchanan, and out to Lake Michigan and St. Joe. So um, so there's 15 counties, all that land is draining to St. Joe River and coming through here out to Lake Michigan. So a big land area. Most of that land is in agricultural use, um, but of course we have the urbanized areas too. So we've looked at the St. Joe River and um, what we see the most in terms of pollution is actually sediment that's coming off of the landscape into the river, which carries nutrients. Um, talked to Tim today about E. coli pathogens um, are also another major pollutant we see. Um, also some chemicals like pesticides and other things that are making their way into our waterways. Um, we also see a lot of hydrological changes with um, over the years we've filled or drained wetlands, which used to slow that water down and and um, now it kind of, with the loss of those wetlands, really changes how the water moves on our landscape and also with the urbanization. And of course, another beloved waterway here is McCoy Creek, which um, is a tributary to the St. Joe River. And that just shows you how big the area is. Um, I have the Buchanan um, city limits there, but it shows that whole green area drains to McCoy Creek. So pretty big area there that's draining to that watershed. And it's just a small part of the entire St. Joe watershed. So as part of this program that you guys are part of with a permit, like I said, public education, public participation, um, illicit discharge detection and elimination, um, staff will somehow at times have to go out and look at um, where the storm sewers are entering into creeks and make sure that they're testing that and making sure that it's 
um, not polluted. Um, they look at when there's construction sites and making sure we have you know, erosion control um, during construction to keep, again, that sediment on the property when land is being disturbed, because remember that's one of our biggest pollu pollution problems. And also just pollution prevention practices with public works and other staff at the city, make sure that all the city's facilities are um, run in a way that's not contributing to any of the problems. Um, so the city, um, like I said, we often come and bring our display and have our um, fact sheets here. We do social media posts and we, we share all this with all the communities for you to use in newsletters or on your social media to try to get information out to the public. Um, you know, a lot of people still think if they put something down a storm drain that it would maybe go to a wastewater treatment plant and be treated, but it usually goes straight to a water body. So you never want to dump anything down those drains. I've seen people dump oil. I've seen people dump um, all kinds of things down there and it should not do it because like I said, it'll go directly to our waterways and cause pollution. Um, the other thing we do, we have a, a video. Um, every community, we give them a little thumb drive with a video on it for the staff here at the city to be trained on how they can be implementing best practices with the things they're doing around the city. And then the other thing that we try to educate um, all our municipalities are is what we can do with planning and zoning to um, encourage better development to protect our water resources. So again, messages to the public. We try to get this information out. This is just like a little graphic we use about things you can do in your own household to you know, make sure that if you are using fertilizers or pesticides, you're following all the directions. and try to minimize their use as much as possible. Out in the rural areas where they have septic systems, making sure they're maintaining those and getting those pumped regularly. Obviously in the city you have sanitary sewers, so you don't have to worry about that. But if your friends out there, you wanna remind them to maintain their septic systems because that is a big deal um, when those fail and are causing pollution. So again, nothing down the drain except for rain. Um, and picking up after pets is a big thing also that we want to do. Um, oops. So again, these are just some of the social media things that we share out that you can use and give um, information out to the public. We have them for different seasons. Then I talked about better development and um, this is one of my biggest pet peeves is in the left side picture there in that parking lot, there's a parking island there and um, you know, usually it's built up and then plants are placed on it. If we do it differently, like here down in the right hand corner and create where the water could go in there and kind of make it so water could go in there and infiltrate, all those little things kind of help slow that water down and filter it before it gets into storm drains and out to our creeks. And that helps with filtering out the pollutants, but it also kind of slows the water down so you're mitigating flooding downstream also. So a lot of benefits to that. And I'm trying to work with communities to implement more of these things in new development. It's always harder, to, uh, more costly to go back and try to retrofit these areas. If we can do it with new development, it's a lot easier. You know, a lot of the areas in the city are already developed, but if there's places being redeveloped, this is an opportunity to do that. And because you guys are lucky and work with me for your master plan, a lot of the stuff is already in your master plan. Um, talking about these, what we call green infrastructure and using native vegetation to filter out the water. And of course, you guys have your wonderful Tree City program, which is very, very beneficial for water quality along with all the other benefits it brings to your, your town. So you've got some great things going on. There is some recommendations in the master plan to look at the zoning ordinance and see if there's things that could be updated in that to, to encourage or um, require some of this kind of development to happen when you're seeing development in the city. Um, but you got all the great stuff in your master plan, which is wonderful. Um, where am I going now? Where's it going? <laughs> Sorry about that. Where did that go? <laughs> Can you hit what's the next one on the phone? Show? Can you hit down? Oh, no. Well, there you go. That's there we go. <laughs>
<laughs> so that's just the entrance of where the St. Joe River ends up in St. Joe going out into our beautiful Lake Michigan. And that's one thing I think a lot of times with these permit programs, people get really discouraged and oh, we have to do all this stuff. And I think if we keep the, you know, the purpose of it is protecting our water resources in Lake Michigan that, you know, is something we need to do and really try to um, encourage folks to learn how to be better stewards of our resources. So if you have any questions, if not, that's all I have for you guys. I have one question. Yeah. If somebody wanted to find where that, where natural vegetation, a list of those approved plants, where would they do that? Yeah, um, there was on one of the slides a manual called um, the Low Impact Development Manual for Michigan has some resources in it. And really, if you just Google native plants in Michigan, um, there's lots of different resources out there. Um, they'll come up. All right. And uh, another really good local place is our county conservation district, right, in Berrien Springs. Um, Nancy mm -hmm. Carpenter, she was the director of her. She just retired, but Lisa Kuntz has taken over, and she's a wonderful resource. They even do plant sales every year so that's a great source to buy the plants because they've been grown locally here and they'll do really well they do their spring bug catches and their fall with uh, bug catches too yes. they yes. go in the creeks hmm. i guess i need to start sending it to you because i get them all the time i know the plant sale one that's a big <coughs> one. they go out and catch the wigglies in the creek too yeah the macaron is there any money i mean it's all taxpayer money whether it comes from the city the state is there any direct funds that we can pursue to help us when we're, because I mean, we're going to do a front street program mm -hmm. and we're always digging for money. You hear everybody complaining about 50 bucks a year, which is 50 bucks a year, yeah. but that's always the thing. The state tells us we got to do stuff, but then they never puke up any money. Mm -hmm. So there is not, they're not going to give you money to fulfill your permit requirements because that is a permit requirement. And, but if they're going to do anything above and beyond what's required in a permit, they would definitely consider um, grants. But you have to plan for those. So like uh, if you work with state or federal grants, it's usually you apply and it can be a year or two depending look at the, <laughs> you know, before you get the money, right? Um, so you gotta like plan for it. And um, But if there is a project, and I've met, you know, with. Rich and um, Ashley, who was here before, on different grant programs and stuff. And so I am a resource to help with some of that if you have projects that you want to try to incorporate some of this stuff into, and we can try to go after grant funds. But I need, I need the time. And this can't be like, oh, we're building it this fall or even you know, next spring. It's too soon. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Marcy. Yep, thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Good job. Thank you. All right, at this time, we'll go on to reports by departments, committees, and boards. Uh, Rich Murphy. Thank you, Marcy, you. for uh, sharing that really important information. It, I think in the Great Lakes region, we forget, um, we take it for granted sometimes, the water resources we have, 20% of the world's fresh water. So uh, um, in other parts of the world, they, they worry about water. We don't, but we uh, have this opportunity to take good care of it. So I think that's great. And, uh, I appreciate that message. Um, Rich Murphy, Community Development Director. Uh, also on the native plants, um, we did have this discussion on the Front Street Project back when we were engineering, and we did propose native uh, hardwoods and plants. Uh, we worked with uh, an expert uh, native plant list that was provided to us by Fernwood and other resources. So uh, I'm a big proponent of using native bringing the kind of native landscape downtown. So I think that will be part of our Front Street project that in, in, uh, with our USDA loan funds. So. Um, I had a few things for you tonight. Um, uh, three uh, cannabis renewals. Um, first one is um, 2024 permit renewal for Redbud Roots. Uh, Alex Leonowitz um, reminded me that we still have one to do this year. We did, we usually do them in two cycles. Uh, there, there is still one. Uh, this is an adult use class C grow for 404 Post Road. We have received the application. Uh, we have received a fee. 
Um, we have run the background check to the satisfaction of the Buchanan Police Department. So my recommendation is um, <coughs> to approve uh, the renewal for 2024. I'll take a motion for the renewal. I'll move to approve the 2024 permit renewals for Redbud Roots LLC adult use class C grow at 448 Post Road as presented. Thank you. Do we have support? I'll support and I have a question. Mm -hmm. So this is the for the grow? This is for the grow. Yes. And the other one is the process that you haven't done yet? Is that what he's talking about? Mm -hmm. okay. This will be the last one of their portfolio. Okay, so, so this is it for Red Bud Roots? For 2024, yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay, good. Roll call, please. Swem? Yes. George? Yes. Whedon? Yes. Bianchi? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Okay, next item, uh, 2024 permit renewal for Boone Labs. This is an adult use processor permit for 107 East Alexander Street. Uh, the Boones are here this evening. Um, but uh, we have received the proper application in, in good form. Uh, we have received the uh, payment and run the background checks to the satisfaction of the Buchanan Police Department, so my recommendation is for approval. Very good, thank you. I'll take a motion on this permit for Boone Labs. I'll move to approve the 2024 permit renewals for Boone Labs adult use processor at 107 East Alexander Street as presented. Thank you, do we have support? I'll support, I just have one question. Mm -hmm. We got a new commissioner. What does she have to do to come look your place over? Okay. I'll uh, I'll come down here. It's been a year or so since I've been in here. Thank you. All right. Thank you. All right. Appreciate that. Roll call, please. Swab? Yes. George? Yes. Whedon? Yes. Bianchi? Yes. Carries. Thank you. Okay. Last item is uh, 2024 permit renewal for Kisa. Um, Pinnacle Emporium, this is for the adult use retailer permit and medical retailer permit at 221 East Front Street. Uh, have received the applications and the permit fees, have run the backgrounds to the satisfaction of Buchanan Police Department, so my recommendation is approval for the renewal. So this is for medical? For both. Yeah, this one has both Adult on use there. and medical. So is it one now? Did we combine no. them or is they no. buying two they licenses? They still have two. Okay, mm -hmm. so they're still doing two. two. I'll make that motion to approve 2024 permit renewals for Kisa DB, Kisa doing business as Pinnacle Euporium. Do I uh, support? I'll support uh, the, as presented you for adult use and yeah. medical. Just make sure it reflects that. I got it. You got it? Okay. okay. Roll call, please. George? Yes. Whedon? Yes. Bianchi? Yes. Swamp? Yes. Carries. That's all I have. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank Very you. good. So now there Thank was you. a question on that, though. You s this is all completed now, right, Rich? We motioned and we give them their motion, but then you kind of hesitated, didn't you? Or was uh, that? You just didn't finish the, the full motion. Oh, so the I adult just, use I retailer I permit? Yeah, but make sure it's, I just wanted a point of clarity that it reflected. She fills in the blanks for me. Just making sure it. you throw me a curveball every now and again. <laughs> <laughs> so. Tit for tat. Very good. All right, at this time we'll move on. Uh, unfinished business, we do not have any. Uh, new business, resolution 2024.09 slash 25. Consider resolution special assessment district for emergency medical services through uh, SMACUS. District one, determination to make public improvements, approval of plans and estimate of costs, final determination of special assessment district in preparation of special assessment role. Discussion? So what we're doing now is just saying that we're gonna tell SMACA to tell us more than what we've been asking for, is that what this is about? I mean, no, you're, you're establishing the district. The district. The district is the city of Buchanan. It's always been the city of Buchanan. Always been, Correct. the entire city. And that's right. been since 1992. Correct. And we have another meeting you have two more meetings. Two more meetings. Before it's even close to being finalized. So this approves the district that you guys looked at last time and okay. you scheduled the public hearing for tonight to talk about and hear objections on the district. Mm -hmm. The next meeting, you will look at the cost. Now there is an estimated cost in that resolution from what SMACUS gave us two years ago. Right. Because of their rate changes. Yep. Um, that next meeting, 
will be held next Monday, and that is no decision is being made at that time. That's to schedule another public hearing, okay, for their October, I think it's 14th okay. meeting, okay? And they'll hear you guys out on the estimated cost that they're propos pr proposing for this special assessment. Okay. Then if they approve that, then you will get another notice saying that the city commission approved it. So this is just creating the district and who's gonna be on the roll. Okay. And I will find out your question. I actually text Mindy about the special assessment. I don't know for sure, but I think it's only the schools and any government. Yeah, probably like the utilities too, mm -hmm. yeah. I'm thinking, on that's, like a millage. That's the only thing I'm thinking that is liable from not paying that special assessment, everybody else is. Government but I will get you for sure. I don't know. You don't yeah. know if the churches are? I don't know. Because yeah. I'm trying it's to think question. between street mm -hmm. lights, assessments I was trying to think of um, like the veterans I know that they still have to pay special assessments mm -hmm. for uh, disabled vets um, but I'm not positive but I will find out and I'll put it on our website for you okay yeah, good question. all other communities are assessing the same way we are um, uh, I no. not There's all of them but there was a couple that I know are taking they did a lower amount uh, but taking the rest out of our general like last year we took all of out of our general Fund the eighty thousand to pay for Smackus. I believe Nile City stayed with the same amounts that they went. They originally approved. Um, I think Nile's Charter Township turned down theirs last week. Um, but before they did the same thing, kind of paid a little bit, charged the assessment, didn't change the price, and then took the rest out of general. Mm -hmm. No matter what, if you take it out of your general, you're still taking eighty thousand of city services away that it's budgeted for. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, City Commission's choice on how they want to proceed. Yeah, so it was $40, though, too. It was 40 Well, so before, I believe the hike, and Josh, you're here just in case I'm wrong here, trying to think back. It was at $25 before. It was 20 It was 20 mm -hmm. And then how long ago? Two, that was, two, right. was like three years ago. Three years, yeah. 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 It was held. It we followed exactly what Smackus gave so us so going back from the resolution so this year would be 40 a little bit more on that Dan so you were here then right I think you were yeah so I didn't like it then it was a, I, I, didn't, like I it didn't either so the original bylaws the, the original bylaws were supposed to be per capita and then they were for whatever reason over time that it's been in existence they switched to this special assessment and then I think it was I want to say it was Niles Township, you know, brought it up to the rest of the, the group, said this is wrong, and yada, 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 here we are. And then we all disagreed with the, the major jump in, in cost. Um, and fast forward today, I think all of us have the districts established, but we all aren't on the same, like Bertrand has an, a full-on mm -hmm. public safety millage on their ballot um, this fall. You gotta keep in mind their population base is less, but like, lots more farmland so like farmers are being assessed in those cases two three thousand dollars versus the average homeowner in buchanan right because parcels are only like quarter to half an acre for the most part they're paying a fifty dollar fee for advanced life support access so it's that that's kind of how we got to this point um i don't I, you know we i have a problem with I, you know yeah. I, I, well hang on hang tight i i do have a problem with how we pay for it but at least i think that's more of a conversation in the next meeting when we talk about cost i think we all have the districts established at this point on if you were to move forward how who you who who gets assessed from your district essentially 
I agree with everything you just said. The problem is, is I want to put the blame where it belongs, and it belongs with us, and not necessarily us as individuals, mm -hmm. but us as a commission. We ignored this. I was screaming blue bloody murder back in 15 about, it's like dealing with, and I don't want to be too personal, but dealing with our baseball association when we ask for book work from them. We don't get it. And we're capable of getting it, and that's all we get told. And when we're told, how else can you raise funds, all I ever got was excuses. Now, I went to one meeting, I got mm -hmm. invited to one, mm -hmm. but then I didn't get invited to any more. I wonder why. <laughs> you know, they, they, we service an area, mm -hmm. but they don't want to, and they take money from an area, mm -hmm. but they don't want to allow that area at the table to have a vote and take their money without building another barn. So, I mean, we really need to get aggressive and I mean, the taxpayers don't want to hear this. I understand that, I understand that. But you can't fix something that's been screwed up and ignored for 30 years, you can't. You can't fix it overnight. You can't change it overnight. So, I mean, I'm, we have to have an ambulance service. We have to. But we have to get very aggressive about going to these meetings and shaking this up real hard, real hard. Like taking it by the tail and shaking it till it's not moving no more. So, and I mean, I know there's different opinions on that, but I've been around this for nine years now and I don't see any difference except for going up, going up, and going up. I will just make one, because because of the emails and phone calls, there was a little bit confusion with the public. So just for the record, there was a renewal for county law enforcement and public safety proposal and 911 emergency system this past August. That was county. That has nothing to do with SMACUS. Um, a lot of people were angered saying that they should have, they're already taxing us on there. That has nothing to do with our ambulance service, just an FYI, okay? Everything's separate so that we can tax you more. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. All right, at this time I'll take a motion. I think Mr. Uh, Beckard went out of town. Sorry, we did a late turn. Okay. Yeah, sorry, I, I know you wanna say, we're not supposed to be doing dialogue. Okay. Catch I'll catch you after the meeting. meeting. We can talk you about it after the yeah. meeting. Well, it's something that everybody might make, but I'll move that time. So I'll move to approve Resolution 2024.0925, Special Assessment District Emergency Medical Services through Southwestern Michigan Community Ambulance Service, SMACUS District 1, determination to make public improvements, approvable plans, and estimate costs, final determination of Special Assessment District, preparation of Special Assessment Rule as presented. Do I have support? We've got to move forward. I second. Yeah, okay. just a comment. I, I expect significant discussion, just a heads up, on, on cost at our next meeting and how that actually is getting handled much to Dan's comments. But establishing the district tonight, I think we have to move forward on that. Very good. Roll call, please. It's not going to go down. Whedon. Yes. Jansky. Yes. Glenn. Yes. George. Yes. Motion carries. Very good. Thank you. Moving on, uh, water plant improvement proposal, consider approval of proposal to perform tasks for chemical feed system improvements at the wastewater treatment plant. Oh, this is actually at the water treatment plant. Sorry, the water treatment plant, my apologies. Uh, drinking it's water similar. and the, the proposal is from a firm, uh, Solberg and Knowles, they're very familiar with our equipment. They're well versed in that equipment. They perform maintenance on chlorine feed equipment throughout the state. Uh, they propose to perform the maintenance and calibration tasks, install new and rebuilt vacuum regulators, remote meters, and one new gas sensor associated with the chlorine feed equipment for the city's water distribution system. And then upon completion, the system will be returned to full service and fully functional as it is now, but it just needs some maintenance and uh, calibration and replacement of some of the components of the chlorine feed system right now. And uh, I recommend the commission approve that in the amount of $6,795. Do I have a motion? I'm going to approve the chemical feed improvements in the amount of $6,795 to Solberg, Knowles, and Associates. Do I have support? I support. Thank you. Roll call, please. Bianski? Yes. Glenn? Yes. George? Yes. Sweden? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. All right. Uh, next on the list is expenditures. Consider approving the expenditures for September 23rd, 2024 in the amount of $119,873.57. Um, Thank you again for keeping it off the consent calendar. 
I go through them. I usually ask Tim. The travel, you know, that was the only question I had for him. Uh, it was both justified. We got new, new police officers that got to get on in-face training. Cal has got an in-face. Um, I would recommend and ask that we do as much Zoom as we possibly can. You're going to get just as much out of it. You're just not going to have to stay in a hotel and charge 50, what is it, 56, six, 56 cents a mile now? A lot of that is I have to pay for my accreditation. So right. I do take a lot of Zoom. So, so um, I move to approve the expenditure as presented. Do I have a second? Support. Roll call, please. Clem. Yes. George. Yes. Sweden. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Here. Very well. Thank you very much. Uh, next up is communications, Eagle Grant update. Okay, at the last meeting, I briefly mentioned that we were in the running for a uh, grant, and we were in fact notified that the city has been awarded the grant in the amount of $558,500 with no matching funds required. The grant is relating to locating and identifying lead service lines and in general developing a comprehensive inventory of the city's water distribution system. It is a federal grant administered through Michigan Environment, Great Lakes and Environment. Uh, we are in the process of working on our first reimbursement for our staff time already expended in preparing the application. And the grant funds must be expended by September of 2026. So we have two years to perform the work uh, in the scope in outlined in that grant. So we're, we're in the process. We got the grant and we're going to pursue it. That's a big deal because that is. work was all mandated down to us, right? Mm -hmm. That we had to from the list. Yeah, and anywhere. Craig's already done some of the preliminary work on that, and now this just expands that program mm -hmm. uh, exponentially more. Right. So we basically already know where everything's at. This just gives us the money to make sure that we plan it out and tell everybody. Because didn't we know where most of the lead lines yeah. were? I think it's done more than 90%, you, right? Yeah. Um, after we got done with the initial pothole and stuff that we did, um, I shared some stuff with uh, Tim today. I got the whole summary filled out, every address in the town, um, summary of where we predict all the lead lines will be. So that's going to get submitted to Eagle. Good. Because that can all be put soft, or you know. Yeah. Is this going to require any additional staffing for you by any chance, or is it something that within uh, a two-year span? No, um, and that that report will be on the website. Okay. Yeah, I imagine we'll be talking about joint water sewer here at our next right. meeting. Yeah. Perfect. That doesn't pay for any replacement lines or nothing, though, does it? That's correct. It it pays for identifying and confirming the materials at many more locations, up to a thousand. And how does that work? And does a private individual owner have to replace that water line from the water main to the house? I don't no. believe so. We do. Yeah, no. that's all our responsibility. It's Man all on mandated. the city. Mm -hmm. Mandated. Yeah, that's we. we now re mandated. realize that it's mandated. It's mandated. Yeah. But they're not giving us any money to fulfill a mandate. So we got, uh, and that all lives in your water sewer enterprise fund finances. So your property taxes don't pay for that. It's your water bills. further discussion no nope. mayor Weed, can I add yeah. just now that you guys have moved forward just so that everybody knows the City Commission will have um, a special meeting next Monday at 8 a.m. to discuss the estimates for SMACUS to move forward but the final public hearing will be at the regular meeting thank you okay at this time we will take public comments on non agenda items uh, Please keep your comments to three minutes and state your name for the record uh, at the podium before us. Well, good, e good evening, and thank you for the opportunity. My name is Al DeBrito. I am running for sheriff as an independent candidate um, in this upcoming election. Um, I know I've got a mountain to climb, little by little, but we are going uphill. A uh, little bit about myself. Um, I am a retired FBI agent. I spent 24 years as an FBI agent in Berrien County working with the Sheriff's Department, so I'm very familiar with the department. Uh, I was a police officer for about 10 years before that. 
Uh, and then I just recently retired from Lakeland as their security director after about 10 years. So I've got a pretty good background in law enforcement. I feel very comfortable that I could do the job. Um, early on and throughout my career, I've always thought that a sheriff, uh, just like a judge used to be, uh, I say that sarcastically, uh, and prosecutors should be nonpartisan. And that's how I kind of got involved with running for office uh, as an independent. Um, my name will be on the ballot. I'm not a write-in. I was able to get the signatures that uh, I needed to qualify, which is a good thing. And if elected, I, I feel I can bring some well-needed change and a fresh perspective to the Sheriff's Department. Uh, one of my priorities would be I'd bring a violent crime task force or a safe street uh, task force back to the county. Um, for about 10 years, I was assigned to Benton Harbor as an agent, and we had a violent crime task force there where it was a street crime unit. I would make that unit available throughout the county, so each town has its own unique crime problems. Buchanan has its. Uh, I'd work with Chief Burnett um, on, on whatever the issues were down here, whether it's alcohol, uh, underage drinking. Uh, you go up north a little bit, in the Benton Township, you might have a little bit more violent crime, but whatever that issue was affecting your community, this unit would pair up, work in conjunction with the, the uh, local city departments and try to solve that issue. That'd be a priority. Second priority would be um, a mental health crisis unit, response unit within the Sheriff's Department. My time at Lakeland, I saw firsthand what a mental health crisis looked like. Every night, uh, police, uh, amp smack us, medic would be bringing in psych evals and um, the ER, ER is just not the best option for that. Uh, those ER rooms are designed for trauma. The beds are extremely uncomfortable. They're designed to do CPR. They're very, uh, it's a loud environment. It's very bright environment. It's not conducive to trying to de-escalate and calm someone that's going through a mental health crisis. So I know firsthand I saw it, and I would bring that to the Sheriff's Department uh, to, to have a unit to respond to address some of those issues. How am I doing on time? I, I'll give you, give you some more if you've got a final, okay, I just, I got got a final, final closing final that'll put us home. Have, yes, yeah. I, will, I will close. A lot of wasteful spending at the Sheriff's Department, and I, I take a real hard look at that. Like I said, I've worked with them for 20, almost 25 years, and I can, I know what we should be doing better. Um, that's all I'm gonna say for this evening. Thank you for the opportunity, thoughtful consideration, and please remember to vote. My name will be on the ballot, and it will be a non-affiliated candidate. Is that how it's? I believe what yours says independent. Independent, mm -hmm. yeah, there's a new term that they came out. But anyhow, th thank you for the time. Thanks, Al. Yeah. Okay, any further, oh, Norma? Norma Ferris, 304 North Oak. I am asking a request. I'm a walker. The sidewalk up by Hovens has been a mess for some time. Mm -hmm. Would you please put notification closer to the five intersection? I could get up there, then I have to jaywalk across the street or walk in the street and then jaywalk back. Would you not consider it, but do it? <laughs> 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 I think Tim's gonna give us an update real soon on us getting that fixed, so. Thanks, Norma. Mm -hmm. So I am Randy Bickard again from 921 Maine in Buchanan, and I come tonight to hear the smackest thing, but since we have an open forum for a few second, few minutes, um, last year about this time I presented to the committee about uh, bringing pickleball to Buchanan. Mm -hmm. uh, I worked with Barb a little bit, uh, not a person but our organization, to try and look at funding and things of that nature. Um, at that time there was some turmoil uh, with the commission and with uh, city managers and stuff. Uh, and uh, I did a whole lot of work. It took a lot of my time to put together 
uh, quotes and, and things of that nature. But uh, it was something I was willing to do th for the community. I've lived here all my life. Um, and, um, you know, so uh, anyway, I put all that together, uh, presented. And at the time, uh, it seemed like the perfect, perfect location. And this was the old Clark parking lot up on River Street. Mm -hmm. uh, at that point in time, I was told, uh, great idea, but you're probably going to have to find someplace else because there's a business going in there. And this was a year ago. Um, maybe that's still happening, but I haven't seen anything going in there. So um, to me, it just, uh, and, and we don't need much area. Um, you know, if we could, we want to be off near the, the business that's to the east, I think it is. I don't know. There's a business over there. It's a new business. So, you know, we would want to be there because uh, we'd want to stay away from uh, the residential areas and stuff to avoid any conflict. But um, just uh, any progress on, on that location. And if not, uh, I would be willing to uh, donate my time to spend time with one of you gentlemen or gentle, uh, women <laughs> to uh, you know, figure out where the best placement this might be. Because certainly there is some um, noise that comes right. from playing pickleball. Uh, so we wouldn't want to upset any residential areas, but uh, that seemed like the perfect area. There's a business coming in, fantastic, but uh, you know, just some thoughts. And then uh, my time with Barb, um, I was just hopeful there'd be some more with uh, some grants and stuff like that. The communities around us are continuing to get grants. Uh, Niles has uh, just north of the YMCA some really nice courts. They have Fireman's Park. Uh, down near Shelton's that's going to be going away uh, and then they just received a million dollars to build more uh, pickleball courts uh, out near Bond Street I'll, I'll say. Oh. Mm -hmm. So um, somebody's getting the money someplace so um, uh, you know I'll, I, will, I would again donate my time to help. I'm not a, a grant writer so you know I have no idea what to do but you know we need a location and uh, you know there's money out there we just need to go get it so um, and that's what I have to say. I love the idea. I mean, what Niles has put together at Flynn Park is, is really second to none. And I, I know you spend a considerable amount of time out there, I believe. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I think the number one complaint has always been the noise, yeah. right? There so, noise. from a residential. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, Randy. All right. Okay. Seeing no more public comments, uh, we'll move on to city manager comments. Okay. Uh, the, re the retaining wall up by Hovens, the design is complete, and we're preparing to go out for bid on that project right now. And the bidding documents are being prepared, so it's coming along real good. Uh, are you in the ballpark? <laughs> I don't want to commit to a ballpark <laughs> right now, Manuela, but we're farther along than we were last February. I know that. Uh, the Michigan State Treasury had an assessment role and practices, au practices audit performed. It's called a PA 6600 audit. Uh, 15 compliance items were reviewed and the city of Buchanan was found to be substantially compliant with no correct, corrective actions required. And I think that exhibits good work by, done by our assessor, Mindy Cole Crocker, and she deserves uh, kudos for the work she has done in our assessing department. Mm. That's all I have. Very good. Thank you, Tim. Uh, Mr. Bianski. I really wanted that pickle pork, and I fought really hard for that pickle pork. And I don't know... Who told you to put it on River Street? Because that's established in a whole nother park. You know, and I really hated the fact that you did as much work on it as you did to put it on another, in a new location. Because we do have McCoy Creek down there. We do have Ravish Park. I know the apartments are right there. But if you put it in the right spot out there on Ravish, I personally feel, but I'm sure we haven't talked about it. The correct way to do this is Barb has got to make a presentation to us. And Barb has got to find the money. Now, we spent all the cash on the pavilion up north, so we have no feed money or seed money. So that being said, and then, um, I don't know. I lost all track. It just went. I really wanted that pickle part. I agree. Yeah, I, I, want the, I, want the, I want the golf course, too, the, the disc golf. Frisbee golf. Mm -hmm. That fell on its, you know, that fell on itself. I mean, there's things that we really need to do, and when we talk about grants, Everybody is getting them, but Buchanan, I mean, we're getting some, but you have to understand whenever we start doing anything down here, we're 30 years behind the curve on everything we start. 
you know, and that's no individual's fault, but everybody's fault. So I'll stop there. Well, talk to Rich and talk to Wendy out there at Barb. And I think Larry is on the Barb committee now. They threw me off. Damn. <laughs> always, <laughs> you threw always me off. off. I <laughs> I'm sorry, Mark. That is honest. I mean, it is honest <laughs> truth. It's the honest truth. Miss George? Um, yeah, I'll go along with Dan. I think that the pickleball. Uh, these courts would bring a lot of um, just, I think it would be really good for Buchanan. And I know a lot of people that personally play, and they always, they live in Buchanan, but they always are going to Plum Park or, you know, making the trip to go there. And I think that it would be good to do whatever we have to do to make sure Buchanan is where it's at. So, yeah. That's it. Thank you. Mr. Swing. Since we're talking about pickleball, I'll start with pickleball. So I uh, really do appreciate the work you put into that last year. And I can understand why you hit the pause button, too. And it was probably not the best time, right? But um, I think at that time, I told you to go to go to Barb, which I'm glad to hear you started that. I hope you go back to them. Um, and uh, my personal feeling is I think Ravish Park's that right, right area. I really do. It's a lot of green space there. You know, our parks have posted hours. There's basketball courts that makes noise. Kids playing makes noise. So I don't think a pickleball court is intrusive to that. Um, Dan brings up a very valid point, though. When you create a new park space um, out, of, out of other land in the city, if we ever want to change that in the future, it actually has to go back to, like, the public for a full-on vote by, the, by all of the people. So, like most communities are trying not to create new park zones but enhance existing areas which i think we as dan pointed out we have a lot of opportunity to enhance existing park space and get more out of what we already have established with you know we're land poor in, right, in a city so we only have so much opportunity to to grow from a development standpoint and if we take vacant place away that's already zoned for industrial growth we really limit our impact that we can create from a taxing standpoint long term commercially so to me, it's Ravish Park. I, I would love to see us continue to invest more there. Um, and, the, and the Frisbee golf thing would have been great down at Centennial. That was a low impact, low cost project there. So I hope you can connect back with Barb because I think we would all encourage seeing that project. I didn't see the million dollar one at Niles. Uh, I saw their earlier one. I thought the million dollar was like a, a tax millage that they're putting on the ballot for their residents coming up for a splash pad. So. But I could be wrong. I, I, I'll connect with Nick and see what they had going on there because we, we got a pretty good line of communication. If we can double up on that, that'd be great. Um, earlier question on the taxes. You get to get picked on a little bit because you said a lot tonight. So <laughs> uh, The tax break, we actually post on the city's website, uh, two years running now, a, a really great breakdown of where your tax dollars go, pie charts, dollars, cents. Um, and the city of Buchanan residents are great at, at voting in new millages from things that are, you know, residents use, like the college or um, the library, things like that. But again, every time we vote yes on things, that, that raises the bar. In the four years that I've been on here, I, I know tax, the tax millages you've paid have actually gone down because of Headley rollback and our growth. <laughs> um, the increase in taxes is either from a millage that got passed or the standard state inflation. And we have no control over that. Um, so this board, at least in the last four years, has not raised taxes on the residents. They've actually gone down. Well, it was a micro amount, and you didn't notice it because the state gobbled it all up with their, in, you know, their inflation tax. Um, we have not increased taxes, at least in the last four years. So, And then last but not least, my, my favorite topic that Ken seems to come up, smack us, sorry you get to be the brunt over there on this one, is, you know, my, my I, I'm a full supporter in the fact that we need ambulance services, right? But I've been continuously against how you guys receive your capital and that there is not a cap on, on that spending or control mechanism other than that we have somebody sitting on the board. So that, that does that 
make me feel like there's a blank checkbook to you. Now, in your defense, in the years that I've been around, um, again, four years, I, I haven't seen that you've come back for spending above and beyond your ask. So that is a, a little bit of a feather in your direction. But, you know, the bylaws state it's our responsibility to make up any shortfall. And that, that does bother me. So, but that's a conversation for our next meeting. So you can come. Yeah, send Brian, but that way he can come prepared to talk about that in depth and the controls. There we go. But um, I think that would be important for our residents to hear is how you're controlling your costs. Well, I, I will tell you, I, I will be here after the meeting because I've got questions about the finance so, All right. Thank you. Wonderful. That's all I have. Thank you so much. Uh, I won't take very long. Uh, that's the luxury of going last is they pretty much cover everything that needs to be covered. But once again, thank you so much for bringing that to our attention. It's something that I would imagine, including myself and many others, were unaware of this being a potential problem with our young children, especially kids within time frame of middle school to high school age frame. Uh, so I have children myself. <coughs> if anybody who has children or grandchildren, please look that up, uh, be aware of what the symptoms are, and maybe even have a discussion with them about the potentiality of that happening in their life. I know it is personally touching mine, uh, potentially. Uh, it's something that until we saw that and we did some search and we found out there could be a connection. So thank you once again for that. It means it even more personal. Uh, thank you to the cannabis companies that are in the room. I know the gentleman left that was with uh, Kisa. Uh, it's, it's a really tough market out there for you guys right now. and and. Uh, many in the city had, had seen that coming more so from the expansion to other cities that have chosen to do unlimited licenses, uh, but at the same time, it's a much bigger problem than that. And uh, please understand that they're doing everything they can to put out the best product that they can within the regulations of the state. And uh, we hope that they continue to stay here in Buchanan because it is something that's adding value and uh, restoration to our downtown. Um, Randy, thank you for bringing up the pickleball. It, it seems to have gotten a lot more attention in this room than we probably ever would have thought, but it means it's important to people. And we see the cities around us expanding into that uh, fitness arena, and it's great for all ages. So uh, please resurrect that with the barb. Uh, you put in a lot of work, and I think that that can have merit. And if you believe that the state was willing to give us uh, some fi financing to make that happen, uh, I would imagine that maybe even some kind of a shrubbery that would happen to dampen the sound something of that nature, I would imagine other cities throughout the country have had to deal with that as well. So uh, to Dan's point, I mean, we are trying to correct 30 years or somewhere in that avenue of not necessarily mismanagement of the funds, but not putting the funds necessarily where we would have needed them as a city. Uh, Dan was on the commission years ago and has come back. Uh, this will be my sixth year, uh, November. So I'm well aware of that we are trying to do everything we possibly can and spend the money wisely and be conscious of where your tax money is utilized. Uh, and, and please trust me when I say that we are doing it incrementally so that the money is best used on the areas that are the most important. The north side was a long overdue project. I'm so proud of what they were able to accomplish. That was done 100% by the encouragement of the north side neighbors and their continued focus on the beauty and the beautification of their area. So uh, we will continue to follow our master plan and start to do that throughout the remainder of the city. And uh, we'll be as fiscally conservative as we can and, and put the money where it is necessary to ensure that the safety and, and the well-being of our community is always at the forefront. So that's all I have. I will take a motion to adjourn. I'll move to adjourn. Can I have a second? I second. Roll call, please. Flood? Yes. George? Yes. Sweden? Yes. Bianchi? Yes. <laughs> Thank chair. you, everyone. <laughs> I've been the one that he said no. I'd be like, excuse me. Randy. Who originally, when you talk to anybody about what you're going to do, you just decide.